There are so many different ways to modify your car. It is so fun. We call it modifying, but really it's just making cars unreliable and super cool to us. And slightly questionable to pretty much anyone else that knows you need to match your belt to your shoes. By the way, you do. Same thing with the watch. It's a pro tip. It does well when you're going to weddings. Just trying to help you out, okay? I've seen the way we dress sometimes. Anyways, from the 20s and 30s of Woody Boulevard taking up the surge of the movies like Fast and the Furious, the automotive community has and always wanted to make things less Reliable, all right? Like, we're, that's just what we do, okay? I'm Alex, Alex at on Instagram, and today we're gonna be talking about doing a thing to our cars we probably shouldn't do. A process that, by and large, is one of the biggest financial mistakes and wastes we can make as young adults. It'd probably make our parents cry just a little bit when they find out how much a wing costs, and then you realize that they don't really do much. But hey, all right. I, they say buying a house is a bad idea too right now. Anyway, so I mean in terms, it's a potato potato. A passion that makes us get all sunburnt and end up with trophies that we never end up like flaunting. Ladies and gentlemen, we're gonna be talking about you wanting to modify your car. And if you're just jumping into this video, hello. If you wouldn't mind, feel free to hit the old red button. That doesn't actually do anything anymore, but it still makes me really happy. And of course, if you're looking for aftermarket wheels, tires, or suspension, be sure to hit us up over at fitmentindustries.com. If you're looking for anything for your newly acquired car that you plan on making less reliable or not. In all honesty, that's what we're all here for. We're really just here to, to make bad decisions mostly with our cars. The history of modifying your car can go all the way back to the first cars that were ever capable of even being driven on the road. You had things like horse carriage designers that would create tailor-made bodies that would then plop them right on top of existing bodies and body chassis and voila, you had your own unique bespoke tailor-made, all right, custom car in the 20s, back when horse carriages were still kind of like the way that you got around. All because people didn't want the stock bull all right, no one wants to be stocked, baby. It didn't matter if it was 100 years ago or yesterday. We want fender flares that don't line up. Steering wheels that shake. And a big motor that's gonna throw you into a tree. Let's go. The car community saw explosive growth, especially after World War II. Can't imagine why. Not even a little, psych! Yes, we can, okay? After World War II, there was a boom in domestic income. There was a strong economic structure and a bunch of people wanting to relax, have a decent job, pop out a kid or two, and have a hobby. Something about literally having a world war tends to calm people down to just wanting to enjoy life. During that same time, the American dream was thriving, all right? Just thriving in terms of how all, everybody was smiling, it was good, it was a little bit like fallout without the actual nukes. House, two kids, dogs, and a Pontiac Streamliner was what you were aiming for after World War II, okay? On top of that, the disposable income caused some individuals to start tinkering around with the insides of those cars and what made them go fast. You had to remember back then, one in six Americans in the 50s either worked directly or indirectly in the automotive industry. It was what you did. And because of that near connection to almost everyone in the United States, you pretty much had people always around cars. You had the interstate highway system created. You have suburbanization. I'm pretty sure that's a song by the Red Hot Chili Peppers, okay? You had NASCAR get founded. You had drag racing get started. Edelbrock was finally starting to kick Holly introduced their first forward barrel carburetor, all right? Whittier Boulevard was lit and it was doing extremely well. Decades passed and no matter what impacted the overall, you know, state of money, you know, and world stuff with the cars, USA were always just there to just mess with stuff. It didn't matter what happened. Gas prices skyrocketed, people just cruised instead of drag race. You know, once the spark started with tinkering a car, it just never seemed to end, all right? People like you and people like me, we just have a tendency to do that forever and ever. And then we look at somebody else's car and we're like, I want one of those. The video could literally be like the Fast and the Furious films. You could just go on and on and on about it until eventually at the end you're like, what? What am I actually watching? I thought this was a racing movie and now they're jumping off cliffs with cars. Doesn't make any sense, all right? When you jump into the 80s, more countries started to truly play in the world of modification. Take it all the way over to Japan, for instance, okay? That was still booming as well. It started in the 70s most notably, but it definitely grew in the 80s. The international modification was booming. You had Datsuns, RX-7s, Nissans, Mitsubishis, and every other car manufacturer that was doing just about the same as the burly folks around the world in Hollywood, okay? They were just doing it in a little bit of a different fashion. You had countries like Japan that had different restrictions on their vehicles. Instead of it being 17 cat 
catalytic converters on their Bel Air. It was the size of the car and the motor that was in the car that impacted people buying it because you had a ton of taxes on that. This pivoted the modification community in a different way, where instead of talking about V8s and er -er 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 replacement for displacement, it was two liters in a small compact car with a little turbo snail on the top of it, okay? Within a culture that is generally focused around being polite, quiet, and usually conservative, being able to modify a car with a bunch of bedazzled pieces, a loud ass exhaust, and a crazy paint job all of a sudden was a pretty fun way for a lot of people to express themselves. It was a pretty damn good idea. But while the Japanese was working through their modification teenage phase, we'll call it, it wasn't until the mid 80s that it truly began to explode within Japan. You had magazines starting to launch like Option, which was a bad cartooning style magazine that started to share the previously known underground style community of cars in Japan, which previously it was more underground. It was a little bit more rambunctious and rebellious. People didn't like them. The editor in chief of that magazine would then also introduce the Tokyo Auto Salon in 1983. Sure, you had Initial D and other animes and things like that that did have some sort of automotive thing in it, but in 1995 is when Japan truly started to level up again with car modifications because Japan used to have really strict regulation that came to the importation of foreign auto parts. It's finally lifted in the mid 90s due to the US of America, putting a lot of pressure on Japan to try and get them to relax that import tax. And it worked. Applying pressure through OE and OE plus manufacturers, it ultimately caused quite an access of parts that were previously illegal to Japanese residents that really enjoyed modifying their car to become legal. The most recent times of modification have since continued to be supported by people like you and people like me through the use of poor financial decisions. Movies that yell Monica, all right? Best scene, best scene in the movie. Just saying that now. and YouTube videos that make it seem okay to spend too much money on wheels, tires, and suspension, which is us, all right? It looks really cool, plus we love it. The pieces of metal, fitmentindustries.com. But we are not here to talk about the history of modifying your car, okay? You want that, some of that? Go read a magazine, go read Option or something. I don't know, okay? I, okay, we're not doing that. We're here to talk about you wanting to modify your car. So you want to do that. Well, don't set down your 10 millimeter and grab your favorite secondary 10 millimeter because you'll inevitably lose it because we're about to talk about what it's like to make a perfectly okay vehicle un-okay. Not correct English, do not care. If you're looking to modify your car, there's two major things you'll need to know of ahead of time, especially if this is your first time jumping into modifying a car, okay? Congratulations on joining the cult, I mean community. It's a ton of fun and you really, really enjoy it. And you're gonna meet a lot of people that are gonna be really, really awesome. And they're gonna become your best friends, and become family. They're gonna you grill out with them. You're gonna tell them all your secrets. It's gonna be a good time. You're gonna realize you spend way too much time with them. And next thing you know, you're gonna have this really cool group and you're gonna hang out all the time. And you're gonna be proud of the way that your street looks when you have a grill up. All right, number two, there are very, very few times that you'll ever make a car more reliable, more better, more well-invested when you modify anything on a car. I'm just saying it now, just disclaimer. I can't say it without just, it just, it happens, okay? It's not a bad thing, but damn, okay? Do we suck at financial decisions, especially with modifying our car? Maybe it's just me. Modding your car can start with something as simple as your headlights or a full swap in your RX-7. LS swap the world is what people will say and it makes people angry. Anything really counts though. This opens up nearly every vehicle on the road to having aftermarket companies that sell stuff to you. When I say pretty much everyone, I mean everyone. You've got things for Maximas, for Ultimas, for S2000s, to Odysseys, to Sentras, Elantras, Civics, Integras, and everything in between. A lot of times in the past, it was very tailored to very few vehicles because the internet didn't really exist. But now you can do it with pretty much anything. And if this is your first time, you probably jump into the first parts you can probably find on the internet, mostly. That's why we all have that initial awkward phase when we modify a car. Don't lie, we all did it, all right? It was usually headlights. It's either headlights or is the chrome taillights, depending on how old you are. Some tips with modifying your car is to always start with research. Find the brand you want to buy before you buy the part. That means if you're looking for new headlights with a black lens versus like the bunky orange ones that you probably have right now, don't just type in the year, make, and model of your car and then headlights. Go find brands that sell the product and read review on what people like versus what people don't like and try to use the forums of what other people have done already. 
let them make the mistakes so that you don't have to. It's kind of like being the younger brother in a relationship. You just never really get in trouble because you just watch them screw up. By going slow with new parts you've never installed before and doing your research beforehand, the odds of you messing up is actually pretty low compared to when you just guess and you randomly decide to shoot from the hip, which does happen sometimes because we just get excited. When things like that don't happen, they usually end up sitting on jack stands. And when I mean they, I mean your car because it just happens for seasons and seasons at a time because we don't do our research. And usually we end up rushing a project because we accidentally blew up the motor. I feel like this is just like a intervention of things that I have done myself. Okay, final move is if you're gonna modify your cars to do it and have fun, do it for you. Make it slap, all right? Throw it on some baller wheels. Make some people angry, have fun. Join a community, get some cool headlights. I don't know what you would, e I don't know. I don't know what your car has. Buy some decent parts, have some fun, blow up your moat. Don't blow up your motor. Don't be a dick at car shows. Take it to an autocross to see what it can do. And never build it to the point that you're scared to drive it. And finally, show that mother off. You wanna show it off, have some fun. That's the whole point of modifying your car. It opens you up to communities. It opens you up to building something new. It opens you up to learning outside of school and things like that. I mean, it is by all technical purposes, a blast. So show us your car. What do you have done to your car? Let us know in the comment section below. And if you're looking for aftermarket wheels, tires, or suspension, be sure to hit us up over at fitmentindustries.com. I keep looking this way because there is a Miata with vinyl wrap that has glitter on it. And I just don't know how I feel about it, all right? But I love Miata, so I'm gonna go check it out. We'll see you later. Peace.